my usual day, my day of practice, my day of sadhana. Sadhana is spiritual meditation, yogic practice. Yeah, so basically, as I have told you, I try to start my day early, at 3 or 4, ideally. If not, if I sleep in, usually it's like at 5, sometimes 5 and a half. Doesn't make me feel too good when I get up at that time. I, I always feel good if I get up earlier, because that time when it is still night time is a special time. Even though, even though it, it many times makes me really sleep, it's difficult to, to meditate because I want to sleep, you know. When it is dark, your body naturally goes to the sleep mode, so I would, I know that I would have to do other practices which doesn't let, let me sleep, such as pranayama, or I start doing yoga asanas, yoga postures, or some practices like nauli, uh, stomach, um, abdominal cavity churning. This doesn't let me sleep, that actually wakes me up. And basically I usually do like four hours or something, four or five, six hours until, until I eat. I eat at 10 a.m. usually, where I go to prepare my food. And uh, it takes me some time to prepare the food, usually about two hours to prepare the food and eat. After that, you know, I eat quite a lot. With my, when, when the stomach is full, it is, you won't be able to do pranayama, breathing exercises and even to chant. Mantras will be more difficult when your body is, when your stomach is real full. So usually I, I sometimes get into the hammock and I read, now I'm reading a book about shamanism, a good book, or read some other good books, or, you know, on my phone, or sometimes I respond to some messages to some people, but I'm trying to maintain my, my time online or my time on the phone just a minimum. So usually it's like half an hour, one hour of this after food to let my body digest it, or if I, or or I just go and lay in my on my yoga mat that you have seen, and I do other practices which do not involve deep breathing and strenuous activity, where I just lay down and I relax my body, doing body relaxation or uh, observing my chakras visualizing the, the chakra, chakra visual, visualizations. This is what I have been doing lately after food. And then, then I go back into my practices. The stomach still being a bit full. I don't go right into difficult practices, but I start doing mantras. I like doing OM practice, Pranava, Omkara. <coughs> I do a lot of practices. I do a lot of practices. As for the Samkar, it can just go like this chanting. Or sometimes as I'm chanting, I'm concentrating here. Agna, third eye. Or as I'm con or as I'm chanting, I concentrate on certain things or love and send that feeling to people, to people who need help, let's say, or to the world. I also chant a lot of Gayatri Mantra. Should I? My body is still a bit, my stomach is still a bit full, so it's more difficult to chant. <clears throat> This is a special mantra to me. I've been practicing it for many years, 15 years maybe.
powerful one. I do like when I chant many times I concentrate sending this mantra to the world to help the world or to help the people who need help in this way helping you know not just doing for myself my practices but also helping the world regarding mantras I chant different Shiva mantras you can see Rudraksha is actually also associated this mala with Shiva with Shiva energy this one too the different ma different malas you see here I have three of them hanging I do different practices with this usually I send love to the world or I do practices which are more with chakras let's see Well, it could be a long talk. What practice for what practice I use what mala? The most important practice which I do, the most important to me practice, the most intense actually, is pranayama, is breathing practice, including breath retentions. And I try to do every day about three hours at least. And throughout these five months, as I have, as I, as I said, of this retreat, I kept on doing. First of all, it was more. The first months I did more like some of it in pranayama. Of. The ratios, if you are interested, inhalation ratio, retention ratio, exhalation ratio, and retention ratio the same. So if I usually I would do one bre breath in one minute, breathing in one minute once. So if minute has 60 seconds, then what? 15 seconds to inhale, 15 seconds to retain, 15 exhale, 15 retain, and then again. And this and I would go like this for one hour. While at the same time concentrating on different things, usually on chakras. Now, now I'm working more on chakras, energy centers. So this was the f practice I did for the first few months. Then uh, I went into a different pranayama, which was the famous one for two ratio. Inhaling. I would I would count it with ohms when I did it, inhaling. Four, then retention would be sixteen, going on sixteen, and exhalation would be eight of these, and also go for like one hour. Also concentrating my attention. This would be more like Kundalini practice, sending my energies, forcing my prana down, forcing a pana up for them to meet, if you know this language. And lately for the past nine minutes of recording, and for the past one or two weeks I went into a more Kumbhaka, Antar Kumbhaka, where I Inhale. Again, I perform these bandas, Yalanda banda, the chin lock, different things with the stomach, and uh, and mula banda, forcing the energy up. And I would maintain my breath without breathing. So and also do it for like one hour. one hour and then after some some hours throughout the day again another session of another hour and then another session of another one hour I would do three hours I would like to do more but there is a certain limit that your body can stand and your nervous system can stand and your respiratory system can stand 
and also with this with this practice as you're holding these bandas you know it's also mus muscular uh, tension of the of certain muscles uh, that you use to make these body locks so you know three hours <laughs> is quite a lot then your muscles get tired and it is more difficult to do more well it, I could make many videos about that it's actually a subject that is very inspiring to me these practices and it's actually well what most of the people probably are not interested in but I'm very interested in so pranayama which is actually a very intense practice because as I'm saying, well, many people may think that, oh, it's easy, you know, live alone and meditate all day, do nothing, chant some mantras, sing some songs every day, do nothing else, easy life. Certain practices like this that I'm talking about, man, it would be easier to, as I'm saying, to work in some mines, you know, with a dagger hitting the rocks or some other very difficult physical activity strenuous than doing that because as you are maintaining that breath as you are breathing in this certain ratios as you are doing these bandhas and things you definitely go out of your comfort zone <laughs> you are go out of your human zone I would say and you you come close to death you witness your death for example you hold your breath for longer and longer until your body desperately wants to inhale your body wants to start it start starts shaking involuntary twitching fighting you know wanting to breathe in but you just hold on it's like facing death it is facing your unconscious this is where your unconscious energy starts coming up and this is where you have an opportunity to channel that unconscious energy those that nervous energy that manifests as like twitching and things that you concentrated on what you want on a certain chakra on a certain process in your body and this way unconscious energy and karmic energy you burn karmic energy and you make consciousness out of it this is a difficult thing this is not an easy thing and this is man this is not a vacation thing <laughs> it's a very difficult work and dangerous too because if you overdo you're gonna have problems and this is a dangerous practice this, is, this can be a very dangerous practice to your nervous system to your mental emotional whatever spiritual structures it can be a very dangerous thing 13 minutes well man I'll end this and continue in the next video